So is there like a hack to get luxury cars for free? Yes, there is. Bollywood stars are not getting into yeah, are not able to buy these cars. They don't give two flying about the stars. This is not one person. This is point zero zero one person club. <laughs> Ferrari invites you to buy, so you have to have three Ferrari, then you have to buy the fourth Ferrari. So what is the average net worth of a person who can afford a Lamborghini? Why is the government taxing us? Hmm. Why they are doing the wrong thing? Uh, let's say the budget is thirty to forty lakhs. In that price range, what would be the best car? What's so special about this car? One fifty crores. You can buy a private plane in that much money, but no <laughs> way, I cannot answer that. <laughs> Now I want to know what car do you want? Let me just put it like this: uh, There are thirty manufacturers children in the country, and there are about two hundred models which are on roads today. So let's just say that I have access to all those two hundred models of each and every color, each and every variant, anywhere in the country. And some of these luxury cars I can actually get anywhere in the world. How is that? Without paying for insurance, without paying for taxes, without actually having any headache whatsoever. Do, do you help your friends also with this? Sometimes, if you're good to me, <laughs> can I be your friend? <laughs> of course. <you're> friend. <laughs> is there a place where uh, people like who can learn how to drive cars fast? Is there like a school in India for for us to become a fast car driver? There are there are a lot of drift schools coming up uh, where you can actually learn how to drift. Can you explain to the audience what drifting means? Like our imagination goes through Fast and Furious, yeah, Tokyo Drift. Correct. But what is the so drifting definition? is basically driving your car sideways. So imagine you go straight instead of that you're driving like this. And you're circling around. How so do you? You can't do this you, in electric cars. You can do this in electric cars, definitely. But the thing is that we've done this in ice, actually. The same car. Where? In where did you go? In Iceland and uh, Iceland. Yeah, you you have these tracks by Porsche and Audi, and all these brands take you. And since by virtue of having Top Gear, they you get invited. So we can pay 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 these companies to allow us to drive. Yeah, on so this. there's a, it's expensive course. We have to pay ten lakh rupees for two days plus your flight. Okay. And then get to drive these luxury cars on tracks made on ice. So basically, you it's like an experience for people to come there, pay ten lakhs, drive their car, and learn not drive their car. The car is given by the brands. So how much does the car worth? These cars are upwards of two crores, three crores. Okay. A lot of Indians go there to do this. Experience. Yeah, I mean there are not a lot of Indians, but there are like the batch that we I was there. There were fifty people from India. Fifty people. Yeah. Uh, in India. Uh, or even across the world, owning like a luxury car is like a status symbol as well. Correct. Right? It's about so one of the easiest ways to tell people that hey, I'm, I'm rich. Made it in life. I'm rich. I'm made it in life. Uh, but is that it? Like, is that the only driver for people to own luxury cars? So there's a, a there's a very car? big reason. A is what you said is absolutely true. There are thirty percent of the people will buy just to show off the wealth. Huh. Just to show off that okay, you know, I own a Ferrari or this. Huh. Maybe they don't understand what they're buying. Okay. I know people who have bought Ferraris. And Lamborghinis, and they don't even know what engine it is, what capacity. They don't even drive. If they drive, they might just have an accident, and then the cost of repair is much more. So then they keep quiet. Okay. But there's a very big section of people who actually buy because they're enthusiast. 2023, we would be selling around 47,000 to 50,000 luxury cars in India. Like what example. is the average price of a luxury car? Say a crore, 75 lakhs to a crore. So basically, price. the market size they are saying. What do you say? For fifty thousand cars. Fifty thousand cars. So around fifty thousand crore is the market. So around ten billion dollars. Ten billion dollars. Only Mercedes, which is the largest luxury car market in the country, which sells about sixteen thousand cars. Do you know what numbers they sell in China? They sell about seven and a half lakh cars in a year, which is thirty-seven percent of the total sales of Mercedes Benz globally. India is point eight percent. And let me tell you, Mercedes is the number one luxury car market in India. Which they have the highest numbers, followed by the BMWs and the Audis uh-huh. of the world. So that's the numbers I'm talking about. When you mean luxury cars, like BMWs and Mercedes, this is still like um, affordable luxury. Affordable luxury cars. And then beyond that, what is that segment called? Like super, super luxury, car luxury, super luxury, super luxury cars. cars. So how big is that? How many of those cars are sold in India every year? Not many. Lamborghini would have sold 100 plus cars. The Urus's of the world would sell uh, those numbers. Ferraris would be not very big in numbers. Okay. Aston Martin, because I'll tell you what happens in India. There's a very big taboo. First of all, if you own a luxury car in India of this stature, you are paying two x the price of owning the same car in Dubai or US. Can you say some real numbers? So let's take the example of Urus, Lamborghini Urus, which is the most selling and most practical SUV car in the country. Okay. In Dubai, it would cost you roughly two to one half around that mark. Crores. Indian Indian currency. Okay. In India, it would cost you four and a half crores starting price. Okay. And on that, you have to add the road tax, you have to add the insurance, you have to add the options. When you say options, even a sunroof would cost you eight lakhs. 
Okay. Even the Lamborghini stitching would cost you four lakhs. What is Lamborghini stitching? Stitching means supposing you want a yellow stitching on the seats. That's how much. Four lakhs. Four lakhs. Yellow stitching. Around that much, yeah. Okay. If you want the Lamborghini logo, separate price. But when you add all of that options of the exhaust, of the engine, of the logo, and blah 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 blah, it all it goes up two crores. All so, the additions. Yes. Bollywood stars are not getting into. Yeah. Are not able get, to buy these cars. I get calls. So, yeah, I want a early delivery. They don't ask for discounts, and. Then also they have to wait, and you know a lot of brands, like I would not name the star, I would not name the brand, but the, it's a big brand, and they don't give two flying f- about the stars. They said okay. my car is selling, I will give it to the allocation, you know. So and like that's it, how it is. They don't care about any person. Like like I heard like Robert I'm, Hershavak, the one of the Shark Tank uh, person in USA, he kind of gets calls from Ferrari saying that he can get the option to get the cars. Before it is launched, so like these kind of special people across because the world. Because he owns Ferraris, so he's enthusiast. So for a Ferrari, they will always appreciate a Ferrari customer. They will not appreciate a star. There are a lot of stars in Hollywood. Also, they don't they don't buy Ferraris because they don't like to be treated like them. Hmm. Because if a Ferrari owner already has three cars, then he's on their list. You know, you have to be somebody of that reputation. And in India, Ferrari has just launched a Pro Swangway, which is the SUV. In India, they only have allocations for hardly five of them or four of them. I know a lot of actors who are my friends who wants to buy. A lot of rich people want to buy, huh. but they cannot buy because to own a Ferrari of a certain level, first you don't buy a Ferrari. Ferrari buys you. Okay. Ferrari invites you to buy. So you have to have three Ferraris, then you have to buy the fourth Ferrari, and that's but it's not a chicken and egg problem. No, how will I know? How will I own the Ferraris to own? So basically, Ferrari? you have to buy a Roma. You have to buy the entry level. Then buy. What is an entry level Ferrari? Cost? Three crores, three and a half crores. So I need to first own that if I want to even stand even a look chance at the expensive ones, which is the real deal, you know. And these cars actually will be surprised appreciate over time. I'll tell you. I'll give you a very classic example. I'll talk about the Lamborghini Urus because my family has one. So last year we bought it. It was costing three point two four crores ex showroom. Okay. If you add all the costs, insurance, and how you much is an insurance for this kind of a car? So five lakhs per year. Per year. And if you going to add the cost of road tax, and we've got this registered in Karnataka, which is Bangalore, so the road tax was fifty four lakhs. Okay. Now, in one year, this ex showroom price has increased by a crore. That okay. same car would cost you four point two five four four point two crores ex showroom. Plus, if you all of, add all of that, that would cost you five point two crores. So, which investment? Okay. Appreciates like that. So Nothing. most people think of car as a depreciating asset only until, but when you go to super luxury segment, you're it's saying it's appreciates. actually appreciated. Nobody knows how much money you have in your bank. No one knows how much stocks you have. But if you can afford that car, you've yeah. done something good in life. So is there like a hack to get luxury cars for free? Yes, there is. But you have to you have to really understand how it works. First, you have to know all the cars, right? There are some cars which really appreciates in value. Now, supposing you're a business owner, you buy a car for five crores, you enjoy depreciation in the company. You wave. So you can say, you tell what is that depreciation? Uh, roughly twenty percent, twenty five percent. So basically, when the car drops in value every year, twenty percent, twenty percent. So you, you can, can take that money off from your balance. That sure, that can be shown as an expense which expense, you don't have to pay tax for. Correct. Okay. Now after you're doing that, that five crore in three years, if you have the if you have the right pick, it's an art. That five crore car would become mostly seven crores in three years time, and with some cosmetic changes. So when you sell the car after three years, you will mostly be selling the car at the same price, five crores. In three years, you have enjoyed the depreciation, you've enjoyed the status of the car, you lived your life. What you've paid for technically the insurance and the yearly maintenance cost of six seven lakhs. So you basically can buy a car for a second year. You need to have five crore in your bank free. So that's how you if you if you have five crores, that's how you can kind of afford to buy a luxury car for free. For free, you get that money back guaranteed. Okay, can you say name some cars which we can do this with today? Uh, that's a chargeable service. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the average net worth of a person who can afford a Lamborghini? If you can pay a EMI of five lakhs, you can buy <laughs> five lakhs a month EMI. That's how it is. And your cost of maintenance for a year, like your first service in a Urus, would cost you one lakh twenty-five thousand. First what? First service. service. I thought it's free. No, no service is not free. Nothing is free. <laughs> <laughs> first service costs you one lakh seventy-five thousand, and your insurance would cost you four lakh. So your average yearly maintenance would be about seven lakhs. After four years, when you don't get zero percent insurance, then is the real challenge. 
Because then if you, so you have, mean the zero, do you mean the zero depreciation? Zero depreciation. That is gone after four years. Three years, four years. Basically, sometimes. what zero depreciation means is that um, anything you happens, huh. you are covered. Correct. Because these are expensive parts. But right? usually, just for the audience purpose. Ah, uh, so let's say it was if the car cost, if the door costs is hundred rupees, but because it's two years old, they would say it's actually seventy rupees. So for you, even to replace that door, it's hundred rupees, but they'll only give you seventy rupees. And you have to pay thirty rupees. Ah, uh, so but if you get this zero depreciation cover. They pay the entire hundred rupees, thing. but after four years, this goes, this away, goes away. As the car insurance companies don't get, don't they don't do zero percent. On an average, these owners, how often do they drive it, and what is their fuel cost? Fuel cost, I mean, they don't give you mileage more than two three kilometers to a liter. Okay. Most of them. Two three. Two three. Okay. Sometimes one also. Which car is one? I mean, if you buy a very high, high horsepower one, they'll give you very bad mileage. But you never buy that for that, right? You are going to drive it once a week. Maybe twice One a week. One kilometer per liter. Two kilometers per liter. Let's just say that. How big is the fuel tank? Fuel tank would be sixty-five to seventy li- liters. Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, cannot go more than one fifty kilometers. Not all cars will have bigger fuel tank, but you know this is not meant for that. It's, it's not meant, meant for long distance. It's, no, it's meant for long distance. You have to fuel up. Huh. You cannot drive more than three hours a supercar, right? Because your back will hurt you. You will be driving at that speed, and most luxury supercars are not the most comfortable cars. Really? Yeah. Even the backseat would because they are meant for enthusiast driving. You know, there's a car uh, which is by Bugatti, which is my poster car. Bugatti. Bugatti is called Loi Votre Neuer, and that car costs about 19 million US dollars, which means it costs 150 crores, which means that is before your taxes and custom duties. Put What's together. so special about this car? 150 crores. You can buy a private plane in that much money, but huh. that's Bugatti that can do. Uh, steel winds of that can do speed limits unheard of and that's got t- so what is the fastest car in the world Bugatti is where the fastest car but I'm not sure I think Cohen Exec has just beaten them on their own game and in that's the ICE version but in EV Lucid Air is the fastest EV there's but there's Penifena Batista which is actually owned by Mahindra's that can also do I mean I'm talk to put things in perspective Lucid Air can do 0 to 100 in roughly around 1.8 seconds. Okay. Now you can imagine. Uh, if you had to drive only one car for the rest of your life, which would it be? Very difficult question. I cannot <laughs> answer that. No <laughs> way I cannot answer that. There cannot be one car which I can drive for the rest of my life. But if there's a question, if there's one car which I want to buy, which I would put in my poster and look forward to, is that Bugatti. Bugatti which one? 150 Bugatti. 150 crore. You don't have it yet. Of course. I will never have it, but that's the aspiration, you know. What is that top speed of that car? Oh, that top 400 speed. 400 kilometers per hour? Top, yeah. That would be around that much. So, but you can only probably drive it in the Autobahn. That Autobahn. Speed. Have you no, gone there? No, you can't even go that much. You see, I heard Autobahn has uh, no, speed no speed limit. limit. But huh. you know, 400 kilometers is death net speed. Huh. I mean, my uh, only racers and people. For average blokes, I think 300 would get the sweat out of your pants. Okay. I've done that, I know it. After 300, you get very scared. You get very scared. Like what happens after 300 kilometers per hour? What happens in the car? Inside? Your ex- heartbeats are, I mean, you know, imagine your m- body is moving so fast. Huh. You see that acceleration going, you go- Do you feel ahead. like you're going fast because you're just seeing the road in front. You get to see other cars that you're overtaking. Yeah, you, you get to see roads on the front. The moment you took here and there, you have reached somewhere else. Okay. You know, and any road, no matter how safe it is, they can always be that stone on stone. That. They can always be somebody here who suddenly skidded and come on your way. So luxury cars, supercars are not meant to be driven fast. They are driven supposed to be enjoyed. But some people like uh, going that top speed and then taking a photo of it and then yeah, that's wrong. That's uh, totally wrong. I mean, they are setting the wrong example. At that speed, you can't take a photo. <laughs> Trust <laughs> me, you can't take a photo because you can't leave your steering. It's, right. Is that because you know you're not a you're not a you're not a fun driver, right? You are a normal human being. You go to work, you have kids, you have a lot of things, you know, they understand the engine, they understand when to brake, they understand the roads that they're driving on. They'll never go on a speed at once. First, they'll take rounds and rounds of that circuit. They get the feel of the corners. Then they go those speeds. They practice, yeah. they practice, they go. Like they, get they the know the it. road even while they're sleeping, they know exactly yeah. when to turn. So in private roads, you can't do it because anything can happen, anything can pop up somewhere. Yeah. Then you are... Right. Viola, <laughs> finish. <laughs> Uh, for the audience here, right? Uh, let's say the budget is 30 to 40 lakhs. Mm-hmm. In that price range, what would be the best car? I mean, there's a Mercedes A-Class, there's a X1, there's a Audi 
every there's a Volvo which comes in forty four lakhs ex showroom. Okay. There are multiple cars, but you know what? In today's time, there are many cars which are at twenty five lakh rupees mark. Okay. Which have all that tech and comfort, etc. Which are forty lakh car girls. Really? Yes. Yeah. Like, can you name them? Like say XUV seven hundred is a good car. XUV seven hundred. Mahindra XUV seven hundred is a good car. Then you get also the Jeep Meridian. Okay. which is also a very decent car so is ev like relate in in ev luxury segment versus an ice luxury segment is the price different yeah like evs today are priced a little higher because the cost of batteries of course, huh. are but but i think that as you go up the ladder the price difference is not so much so i'll give you another perspective you know okay there is this car called audi rs q8 okay and the lamborghini urus they all are made on the same platform which is the you know mlb platform what does that mean the platform means the architecture is the same okay and rsq8 and lamborghini urus are almost identical with terms of power figures the way it's built the body like but the rsq8 would cost you 2 and 1/2 crores and the urus would cost you 4 and 1/2 crores just because of the brand just because you buy into the brand to a smart person who's a very very smart enthusiast who doesn't care about branding who doesn't care about anything might just settle for the rsq8 and somebody who wants that 1% club huh. to be entered this is not 1% this is 0.001% <laughs> club <laughs> because you have 1% club so i thought it will connect very well <laughs> so that they would buy the urus okay. also of course lamborghini is lamborghini you know right you buy into a lifestyle you buy into a statement and you buy into a feeling right and if you have it why not if you have 100 crore in your bank lying around you don't care In India, there's a taboo. The thing that a lot of my friends, oh, my tax authorities will come to know. They'll come and raid us. I, we don't want attention. We'll get. Nazar will come. I said, bullshit. Come on, if you have the money, go and live your life. Right. You have worked your ass off. Enjoy it. The more and more luxury cars are there, the better is for all the others who will actually see you driving around. They'll aspire to work hard. Hmm. If you want to foster entrepreneurship, what better way to motivate motivate something? Hmm. You can't foster entrepreneurship by making everybody walk run in a slum, right? You have right. to give them them some feeling. You have to have supercars on the road. You have to right. have luxury boutiques on to the road. To build that so, aspiration. Yeah, build that aspiration. So that they then also the whole hustle. country prospers. If you see in your in your friend circle somebody has bought a Ferrari, how will you feel? Hey, yar, I also have to work hard, man. Yeah. Aaj maine jada karna. That feeling will come. Right. The employees will work towards the mindset. Mindset. Right now, our aspiration is to buy a nice car. Hmm. This might be materialistic thing, but if you don't. want if you don't have put that carrot in somebody's mind how will you drive somebody to work hard right. you give your employees incentive don't you give your employee incentive yeah. to work hard if you tell them okay if you work this mean given this much i'll buy you this car see how they work hmm. seriously <laughs> just buy them a car say ki this car delivery will come in 2 years in most of these luxury cars there's a waiting period of 2 years anyways okay so that's how it works all your hmm. employees are laughing right now yeah i mean i think <laughs> I, my salary is a linked by three people now <laughs> So Ramesh can you tell us about uh, Top Gear I mean that is something that most boys in India have grown up watching Same here right <laughs> So and you are about to bring that to India right hmm. How, What can you tell us the story behind that So you know uh, I mean you you said it right you know back in my I always had a poster of luxury cars and most of them they were with the Top Gear sticker you know right. And when I got this opportunity 3 years back it was covid time when we actually acquired the rights for BBC Top Gear in India and and i went to london met those guys and we just back the rights like a desperate child huh. because i really wanted to see myself as an editor and publisher and running the show was it and, expensive to get the rights uh, of course i don't ask me how much huh. because that's <laughs> <laughs> difficult to say now uh, yeah so we are doing something very exciting with uh, the, with, the, with, the, with the brand and it's a powerful brand you know anywhere in the world people know the brand and you have to do nobody i don't think of any brand in the car sector which people don't know all the manufacturers love you and everybody has some point of time there whether they like cars or they don't like cars they watch the show and we are going to bring something exciting very soon very interesting all right guys <laughs> thank that, you let's wrap up the podcast and thank you so much ramesh thank uh, you for inviting me thank you for enlightening our audience and one day when we can afford it we will watch this video again and buy the car thank you so <laughs> thank much thank you peace out <laughs> thank you